So my name is Maud Page and I'm the Deputy Director of Collection and Exhibitions here at the Queensland Art Gallery. I'd also like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land upon which we stand and I pay my deepest and ongoing respects to Elders past and present and also to the new generation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that teach us so much of, about who we are and where we need to go, so thank you. And thank you to Avril for your always wonderful acknowledgement. I'd like to firstly welcome artists. It's fantastic to have you here. We've had an amazing weekend with you. Also to our International Visitors Program guests and those of the First Nations Exchange Program, wonderfully supported by the Australia Council. We couldn't do it without you and it's fantastic. Also to the many familiar faces that have not only contributed to earlier APTs, but that have also continued to create debate around the APT and we are very grateful for those and do very much appreciate these insights over the many years that we have been working on these projects since 1993. So you're probably part of the 32,000 people that came to the gallery over the opening weekends. So no need to really talk any more about the thematics and Chris gave you a little bit more about them and you would have heard a lot of different things over the weekend. But I did want to acknowledge the wider curatorial group that has built this APT. And you will probably know that this is just the curatorial group. Simon Wright, my colleague, will thank people a little bit later as well because it's a all gallery effort for us. Every single person in this gallery has been working on the APT. But I would like to particularly acknowledge, and I do so um, in addition to the people that Chris mentioned and in alphabetical order, Abigail Bernal, Ellie Buttrose, Reuben Kean, Kyla McFarlane, Peter Mackay, Bruce McLean, Diane Moon, Tarun Nagesh, Hamish Sawyer, and Simon Wright. I'm also just going to do a very short speech, it's only about 700 words, about some of the key underpinnings that I think are worth mentioning before we begin. The last three years have seen an unprecedented number of political and environmental events. The Umbrella Movement in Hong Kong, the Sunflower Movement in Taiwan, continued uprisings related to the Arab Spring in the Middle East, the anti-nuclear movement in Japan, and the political turmoil in Thailand and other parts of Southeast Asia. More recently, too, the devastating earthquake in Nepal. Closer to home, movements such as the Reclaim Australia are changing the landscape of tolerance and debate in this country. And you will all have seen the news yesterday, for example. So artists in this APT are very much responding to this deep unease. And I think you'll agree with me, there is evidence of that throughout this APT. The work of the Australian Abdul Abdullah is a case in point, but also Zhao Tao's moving image work, Haida Ali Jan's animations, just to name but a few. Ecological concerns, whether through mining, such as the work of Prabhakar Bashpute in the Goma foyer, Talwe Havini in Bougainville, or as a way to re rebuild what has been left over from this industry, such as the work of Gunabi Ganamba, or obliquely referencing the managing of forest resources and timber, as with the work of Asim Wakif that graces the long gallery here on this floor. Wakif's practice has been an interest to me in this APT. His curiosity about what we demolish and discard as a society, specifically to, in Brisbane, has led him to the notorious Dean brothers, fifth generation Pakistanis, owners of a demolition company who still boasts the motto, all we leave behind are the memories. Well, Keith has borrowed the title for his APT8 installation, but is less concerned at making a judgment as to whether the destruction of historical buildings is good or bad, but rather argues that we need to think more about the knowledge systems that have enabled these and that are in turn discarded or remain unrecorded in the lamentation of loss for the physical structure. This valuing of knowledge system is also one that is rooted in the Kalpa Vriksha, Contemporary Indigenous and Vernacular Art of India project that is showing in our other gallery in Quag. How do you celebrate and continue these knowledge systems and practices and still address the contemporary, the now? For us, this is a project that shows how we work. The APT is cumulative. 
we can afford to let ideas sit until they're ready to be discussed and contextualised. In 1996, nearly two decades ago, we showed the work of the Bihar artist Sonabai in APT3. You will see her work is in our permanent collection in the back galleries in Quag. Her inclusion was somewhat controversial at the time, and maybe Shaitanya might speak a little bit more about that. A few years later, in 1999, the artist Jumbo Wamarawili held a residency at the marvellous National Craft Museum in New Delhi, which I visited with Tarun, under the directorship of Jatindra Jain, who also worked with us in APT3. With the now deceased, so he, sorry, he brought Jambawa Marawili with the now deceased master of Gondart, Jangath Singh Sham. The collaboration that ensued is still felt by Gondartists like Venkat Raman Singh Sham, his nephew and apprentice, as some of you may have heard in Venkat's artist talk yesterday. In turn, Jambawa Marawili meant mentored APT artist Gunabi Ganamba and paved the way for him to experiment and innovate in, this, in his work. Conversations like these are hugely important and that's why today we're together again to have and deepen these conversations. Today we'll be structured to th through three key sessions, moving and shaking, vital signs and bodies politic. Each is comprised of three panellists who will speak and then partake in a wider discussion with a moderator.